become a being of pure energy. I noticed a trend in science fiction. It seems like whenever an advanced alien civilization is shown, they always seem to convert themselves into pure energy. Becoming these energy beings is, apparently, the next step in the advancement or evolution of a civilization. In Star Trek, the Organians were originally corporeal beings like us, but have evolved to give up their physical bodies. And the Q may once have been like us as well, but they claim to have evolved into a state of ultimate purity. In Babylon 5, the first sentient being in the universe has long since become an energy being and stays around to watch over humanity. That was you. And in the distant future, we see that humans have become energy beings ourselves. In Stargate, the ancients, the civilization that built the Stargates in the first place, abandoned their technology and their physical bodies to ascend, becoming beings of pure energy. In Doctor Who, the Time Lords considered doing the same, converting themselves into a state of pure consciousness while bringing an end to time itself. They become creatures of consciousness alone. Sometimes individuals can become energy beings when they achieve a higher state of awareness, like Kess in Star Trek Voyager. Some became energy beings by accident, like Doctor Manhattan from Watchmen. Some have just always been energy beings like Kiki from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And even Superman was an energy being for a while. Is this what we think we will become in the future? I began to wonder. Are energy beings possible at all? To find out, I spoke to Professor Sorab Jha, an astrophysicist at Rutgers University. So do you think it's possible for a life form to exist that's made completely out of energy? Not the way we really define energy in physics. Uh, things can have energy, so matter particles can have energy, they're different kinds of energy. They can have energy of motion, that's called kinetic energy. Um, they have energy just from existing at, and having mass, so that there's something called rest mass energy uh, that Einstein famously showed in E equals mc squared, that some amount of mass can be converted into energy of a different kind, so it can give some energy to kinetic energy of some other particle, for example. The universe is richer than our imaginations often, and so, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, definitely something is impossible. Um, but there are some issues with just, just having a being made of pure light. So, uh, we know that light in a vacuum uh, always travels with a certain speed, the speed of light. So now there's a question of, well, okay, is your energy being, uh, you know, light photons that are moving out in maybe different directions, or maybe like a laser beam all in the same direction, is that a being? But we know the interactions, we have a, a theory for how light behaves and it's been tested and it's pretty specific and so we know what light can do. We know that light is uh, a result of oscillating electric and magnetic fields and so we know how it behaves uh, in space. Um, we can change the behavior of light, for instance, when that light is not in the vacuum of space and it's in materials. So in materials like in water, the photons actually propagate more slowly as they bump into these water molecules and so the, the speed can change. And you can even, we've even had experiments which can really slow down light inside of materials uh, and even make light sort of stand still inside of material. So you could imagine that maybe there are beings that, you know, communicate with light or maybe their neurons, you know, instead of sending electrical signals could send light signals in their brains or something. But it's still light that's traveling between other things that are made of matter. Let's say that somehow in a billion years, we decide to turn ourselves into energy beings. Is there an advantage to that? What would be the point? You know, there are clearly obvious disadvantages with our current biological forms. We're very frail, uh, we have a limited lifetime, we're susceptible, you know, the humans can basically only survive in our, you know, uh, uh, birth state in a very small, uh, thin shell around the surface of the Earth. The weapon is so powerful, the operating system became sentient. There are substances in the universe, for example, matter, that, you know, we can see in, that can survive in many different contexts. So, um, you could imagine that if we wanted to make ourselves hardier and live longer and maybe live, you know, forever, we would, you know, people have talked about, you know, trying to take the knowledge in a human brain and put it into a computer, and, you know, which could, you know, potentially last forever as long as you have the energy and resources to keep right. fixing it. The interface is hot. Well, I do my best. Also, you know, those kinds of robot-type things could be more hardy and even space-worthy. They may not need air, they may need only a very little amount of power. 
it's still matter interacting with uh, so, you know different kinds of energy in the form of light or uh, electrical signals or something like that. It seems pretty ubiquitous in science fiction that you know every advanced civilization eventually becomes energy beings. Where do you think that came from? Yeah, you, you can see the appeal, right? There's there you know uh, like in Star Trek, the Q or whatever, <laughs> they can exist anywhere and they can transport themselves instantaneously anywhere. There are also physics problems with that, right? Moving faster than the speed of light and things like that. Um, <laughs> And you know they don't have to exist in any particular form. So that you know that idea of you know transcending all boundaries, which is a little bit you know the theme of a lot of science fiction is transcending boundaries and you know trying to figure out what is universal uh, for humans and what might be universal for all life. Maybe it's new particles that we've never discovered yet, and somehow we'll discover they're, because they're so rare in nature or maybe short lived or something. And maybe someone will learn about those particles and then figure out a way to make those particles long lived or create them in some way and so you know maybe there will be some other kind of you know beings possible that you might you know, think oh that has a lot of advantages compared to the normal matter that we we, we deal with um, but the idea of energy as, as we discussed doesn't really make sense in the same context you'll find out in any case I'll be watching and if you're very lucky, I'll drop by to say hello from time to time. See you 